In this video I'm going to demonstrate an experimental extension to the Newspeak IDE that integrates debugging with method editing so you have live data at all times when editing code. Uh, to illustrate this I'll use the same example of binary search that Brett Victor did in his famous talk and to do this we'll start uh, by editing a method. We'll call that method binary search on or for rather an element e in a list. Newspeak syntax requires us to add the local variables first and we save that and what's interesting, apart from the colorization bug here, is that we have a view on a live activation record on an activation of this method where we can actually insert data and evaluate and play with right away. So we start by setting up our parameters to have meaningful values. So we'll set a list to be a tuple of strings and we'll set e, the element, to be the particular string f so that we can search for those. And now we can start putting in the code. So the low index is going to be 1 and that's uh, indices, uh, arrays and tuples and such are indexed starting at 1 in Newspeak. If we evaluate that, if you look here where the local and parameters are listed, we'll evaluate and low shows up updated to 1, evaluation result is down here as well, uh, so any expression we evaluate gets listed down there. Next we can put in high, the high index which will be the size of the list, we can evaluate that and high updates to 6, Now mid is going to be low plus high over 2. And when we evaluate that, we encounter the same problem in the, as in the original demo, that we don't get an integer index out of this expression. And the solution to that is, of course, to extract the floor from that, reevaluate it, and get our local set correctly. Uh, next step is to get the value out of the list and as you can see the highlighting tells us we have a typo. Correct that, evaluate, and we have value which isn't the one that we're looking for yet. Uh, now in order to uh, get what we want. Uh, I've saved some code here that's convenient to have over somewhere. And let's go back to where we were and see if we can type this baby in. So now we have a test whether the value is actually the same as the element we were looking for. If not, we're going to adjust the indices, otherwise we're going to return the index we found. And we can now evaluate that code. Essentially this code, of course, will have to go in a loop, but we want to see what it does by evaluating it one by one. This time we evaluate, we've got new indices, uh, but we still haven't zeroed in on things. Now as we go through the loop, we'll be reevaluating these two statements and the body of uh, the if statement, or the, and we can do that and see how the indices progress. So we fill it again, and now we're really at six and six, uh, but we haven't found our element yet. We go do this again, and there we are. Mid is now six. The value is f is the value we were looking for, and if we were actually running this it would return at this point. So this looks good. Uh, what we want to see if this works, for example, when we don't have the element we're looking for in the list, 
So we have elements up to f. Let's suppose we were looking for g instead. We can now reinitialize things. And then we can start executing essentially that same loop again and see what happens. Evaluate it. And we need to evaluate it a few more times. And if we keep going, we find that low is now larger than high. And if we keep doing this over and over again, we'll find that things don't change anymore and we would if we had a loop it would go on ad infinitum and that's why we haven't actually written a loop here because we haven't solved the halting problem and uh, the way to to actually check out a loop is to evaluate its body one step at a time